Hello and welcome to this video series on the Indian Express News Analysis. So today's date is 5th November of 2018 and here we discuss all the important articles from the editorial and the opinion page available in Indian Express. So let's have a look at what are the different articles that we're going to discuss today. Before that, if you have not subscribed to my channel Military Mantra, please subscribe because here you get daily the Hindu analysis, Indian Express analysis in Hindi and English. And if you go to playlist, you will find the lectures on Indian polity and economics also. So my name is Akash Raj and you can read about me right here. So the first article that we're going to discuss is on the left side. It is about the MSME. MSME basically means micro, small, medium enterprises. So what initiative have government taken so that they can actually boost the, uh, the productivity of MSME? What are the various schemes and what are the recent steps taken by the government? We'll try to understand that in this particular video. And the below article is related to politics and we will not be discussing that. But the right side article, this is about the energy security. So as we understand now that US has given us waiver on the CATSA Act. CATSA is basically countering America's adversary through Sanctions Act. So we have got a waiver, but this waiver is only for six months. So by that time, we have to reduce our imports, all imports from the Iran. So we'll try to understand about the strategic autonomy that India has. Should we actually... Um, believe this uh, sanction which has been given by us because our mandate says that we will believe only in the united nations sanctions and not on us sanctions so we'll try to understand here all the perspective from the oil uh, scarcity that might happen and the below article is about the journalist so as you understand the journalism as a profession makes you to move from one place to another some days you are in a combat zone say in the maoist areas other day you are in the insurgency area so what happens is your own life is at risk so basically journalists actually risk their own life to actually report the important things so that everybody in, uh, who is actually watching a news channel or newspaper gets the right or basically the authentic news. So what here is being told is a story of a journalist, how he actually passes through the various conflict zones or basically difficult zones and how he handles it. So really nicely written, you can read about it. So this article on the right side is about the Prayagraj. As you understand that Allahabad name has been changed to Prayagraj, we'll try to understand the significance of it in this video. This, imp th this article is very religious in nature, so we'll not be discussing this. Along with this, on the explained page, we have an important article related to RBI, where the amount of fund that they actually generate, whether to transfer it to government or not, we'll try to discuss that also. So moving forward on the first article, so this is about the MSME. So there is actually a particular ministry which handles this, which is known as the Ministry of Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises. So the office holder for this is Giriraj Singh, who is basically Minister of State of Independent Charge. Under this, there is a department known as National Small Industry Corporation. So these are the basic things that you need to know. Now let's under try to understand what government is doing for MSMEs. So the first thing that the government is trying to do is to provide them the credit system. What does credit means? Say you want to start a new business and you want a loan. So you can go to the bank and you will get it within the 59 minutes. So this is a new scheme that they have implemented for MSME. In order to understand why is government doing so many things for them, you need to understand way back in 2016 when demonetization happened, then followed by GST implementation. So what happened was they these MSME faced a lot of the problems say most of the laborers who work here they, they used to get payment in hard cash but the cash was in limited amount so that's the reason they were unable to pay the laborers and also credit system also actually destroyed also once gst was implemented they have to regulate uh, all the tax payment and also the compliance which has to be done has to be done and they have very limited number of people to actually do it so that's the reason they actually face a lot of problems when it comes to paying the gst taxes and even the demonetization so that's the reason why government wants to help them so under this we already have a scheme known as a pm mudra yojana so here you get loans based on the amount of turnover that you have so based on that you get the credits and the next thing that you need to understand is uh, as you understand the NPA that is the non-performing assets in the bank is increasing but you need to understand here that the role of uh, MSME in these NPA is very much less so the N they are not actually amounting for the NPA so that's the reason we can actually give them the loan because they are not going to default also if they are not taking the loans from these banks from where are they getting the funds from so they usually get it from the NBFC what is NBFC non-banking financial corporations so these are basically shadow banks which actually give them loans but as you understand right now the uh the f amount of faith that people have on nbfc has reduced after the ilfs that is basically the infrastructure leasing and financial company has actually defaulted a lot of trust from the nbfc have gone down that's the reason why rbi is trying to infuse money into the market so that nbfc can also come up again so that's all the things that are happening so before that let's try to understand holistically what are being done for the msp so the first thing that we're going to do is to give them access to the credit 
right say they want a loan they'll get it easily as i've told you about they'll get it in 59 minutes then comes the access to market because whatever you produce it can be screw nut anything it should have a market for it so government will help you get the market the transportation the logistic help or everything will be provided the next thing is the technology upgradation because if you want to produce a product which is of optimum and the highest quality you need to use the advanced technology for that you need to upgrade your machinery for that they have implemented for the you know, providing more tools tool room in an organization so that they can build more and improved quality products moving forward as we know that ease of doing business our ranking has improved to 77 so what we can do right now is uh, we can actually help get clearance very easily say you want to get an environmental clearance land clearance you can get it uh, easily by using only one body there should be one body which will actually regulate all the pollution that happens all the clearance that has to be given should be given by only one body then moving forward is security for the employees because sometimes business doesn't work well but the company has to stay it shouldn't get insolvent so that's the reason actually government infuse a lot of funds into it they give them more credit so that they can actually generate more revenue out of it and the next article that we're going to discuss is about the energy security. So here we understand that uh, India recently got a waiver. Along with that, many countries got it, like say South Korea got it, Japan got it. So what we're trying to understand here is this is not the first time that actually these sanctions have happened or the energy security is under the crisis. So even in 1973, when there was a war going on between the Israeli and Arab and the West, that means the US and Europe were supporting the Israel. So what happened was Arab nation didn't like it. And that's the reason they actually raised the price of the oil. So the whole world has to pay for it. And the next thing what happened was 1990, there was a Gulf War. And then during that Gulf War, we didn't have, India as such didn't have enough reserves to actually sustain because we didn't have so much of reserves to actually store petroleum. We had uh, petroleum only for the next three days. So to take a cue from them what we did was now we are developing petroleum reserves in various places you can take an example of we are building it in andhra pradesh we are building it in Bangalore. we are even building it in rajasthan so we are building reserves in various places also after 2003 when actually saddam hussein was hanged because it was suspected that he's actually developing weapons of mass destruction that's the reason and Arab nation didn't like that also. So that's the reason they increased the price of oil again. So right now what is happening is once America has decided to come out of JCPO, which is basically Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, also known as Iran nuclear deal. So they are trying to come out of it. They are trying to put sanctions on Iran. So they are trying to convince most of the countries to actually stop or try to reduce the oil import that they get from the Iran. So as you understand, when you, if you deal with Iran or Russia, they will put cuts on you. That is basically countering America's adversary through Sanctions Act. So because we are a good friend of it, because we import a lot of military products and instruments from America, that's why we have got a waiver along with Japan and South Korea. But if you understand the whole scenario which is happening in Middle East, you understand Saudi Arabia's image right now is not so good. After the assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, not many countries actually believe in them. But you need to understand that all the oil policy that is happening with respect to the cost is basically emotional and personal rivalry based. That means one nation is against other, they are actually in increasing the price of the oil and the other countries have to face it. And if they are very emotional in nature, say... You don't like a nation, say US hates Iran, that's the reason they want to put sanctions on them. And what will immediately happen is most of the countries have to depend on other OPEC countries. OPEC countries are basically oil producing and exporting countries. So they have to produce more oil and they will charge more for it. So we need to understand that we have started new ties with Saudi and UAE because they are building uh, new refineries in Ratnagiri, which is in Maharashtra. So we need to also understand here that whenever you actually switch from one crude oil to other, you have to change the machinery in your refineries because most of the refineries are based on one kind of crude oil. If you move from Iran, Iranian crude oil to the Saudi crude oil or basically oil which you get from the America, we need to change the machinery that we use in our refinery system. Also here you understand that US actually feels that uh, in Lebanon, there is a proxy war going on by the Lebanon, uh, by the Hezbollahs. Hezbollah is basically a rebel group, which is um, uh, a Shiite group. So there are some important rebel group that you need to understand. The first thing is the Hezbollah group, which is uh, active in Lebanon. There is one Hamas, Hamas is in Gaza Strip. Uh, and there's one more known as Houthi. Houthi is active in Yemen. So it has been believed that uh, Iran is funding all these rebel group. And that's the reason Saudi Arabia and US is countering them by putting them sanctions. And on the map, you can see the map of Lebanon here. Its capital is Beirut and it, here it is adjacent to what? Mediterranean Sea. And here you can see Golan Heights. Golan Heights was in news last year and there was a question also. This belongs to Israel right now. But earlier it was belonging to Syria, but it was actually annexed by the Israel nation. Also, you can see here the Palestinian, the West Bank here and also the Jordan here. So, yeah, that's all here. And here you can see Cyprus is a small island in the Mediterranean Sea. 
and here let's just try to understand the israel map again so here you can see israel and there was a lot of news it's basically jerusalem what happened was uh, usa actually told that they will actually shift their embassy to jerusalem but our embassy that is india's embassy is still in tel aviv and also you can see lebanon here golan heights here it is adjacent to jordan and also this is very important sea which is known as dead sea and if you see closely what you will see is basically the west bank here here you will see west bank and followed by here you see Gaza Strip. I told you about Hamas. So people who live here who are basically rebels are basically Hamas. And in West Bank they are known as Fateh. And here you can see Egypt. Egypt and Israel didn't have good relation earlier in the history. But right now they have they are very peaceful in nature. Also you'll find Suez Canal here. This is basically Red Sea and this is Mediterranean Sea. Also yeah that's all. And here you can see Syria. And the next thing that we're going to discuss is about the RBI. So as you understand that government is interfering in the work of RBI. How is it interfering? Say RBI wants more autonomy and regulatory uh, power when it comes to regulating the public sector bank. So government is trying not to give them. The second thing is government has brought in a new committee which suggested that they should make a new body for the payment regulation. But RBI didn't like it because they thought that payment is basically a small part of banking itself. So they have been regulating it ever since 1934 and even now they want to regulate it so that's the second thing and the third thing is government is trying to actually move the uh, revenue that they generate from their from the rbi reserve to their government coffers so government coffers it belongs to the government which they use to implement schemes to give the farm loan waivers as you understand the politicians basically aim is very short term because they have to get elected for the next five years also that's the reason they actually focus on the short term goals whereas rbi they are technocrats they are basically the coming from domain knowledge and they actually look for the next 20 year terms that economic prosperity of the country to sustain for the next 20 years that's the reason they have long-term plans but right now how does rbi actually generate revenue so as you understand they print currency they handle inflation they also buy a lot of bonds from open markets or even from the banks so they get interest on all these bonds so these interest is actually income from them so whatever the income they get they actually put it in the reserve and it can be used to fight inflation anytime but what government wants is it to transfer all these funds to the government coffers so what will happen later is uh, rbi will not have enough funds if they want to fight inflation so that's the reason there is a whole tussle between government and rbi so what could be a possible solution here is that they said and talk and discuss a one ratio which can actually be given from the profit that RBI earns. Also, if we take a cue from other countries, say UK, US, they actually transfer, the central bank transfers all the fund or basically all the revenue that they generate to the government. We can understand the UK point of view because UK parliament is really strong. They actually cannot, uh, they can obviously take all the money from the central bank very easily. Uh, since RBI is in a lot of news, you need to understand it was formed under the RBI Act of 1934 and when it began it actually had its founded in Kolkata but right now the headquarters is in Mumbai. And next we will discuss about the Prayagraj. Prayagraj is a recent name of Allahabad. Uh, earlier it was also known as Prayag. Prayag basically means the meeting place. As you see in this particular uh, picture, here you see Yamuna, here you see Ganga and there is one more uh, mystical river known as Saraswati. So this was known as Triveni. But right now, because it was known as Triveni, it was also called as the abode of the God by the uh, Akbar. So that's why he used to call it as Ilabad. Ilabad basically means the abode of God. Or, and later on, Shah Jahan changed the name from Ilabad to Alabad. And right now, the recent name is basically Prayagraj. And you can read about Allahabad right here. It is basically located in Uttar Pradesh and it is very much in news. So you, you need to understand the location of it. And that's all for today, guys. Just revise everything that we have studied. We first understood the name change of Allahabad to Prayagraj. We understood how surplus tran uh, transfer of fund from RBI to government can take place. And also how actually can we deal a hit, uh, hit a deal where we can actually decide how much money should be sent to the government. And then later on we discussed about the Lebanon Israel area because of our energy security that we are going to face right now because Israel uh, because we get most of the oil from the Iran we have most of our refineries based on Iranian crude oil so how exactly we can switch in the next six months and next we discussed about MSME how government is actually trying to help them we understood about the mudra scheme and various contributions say the 59 minute loan credit scheme all this we studied here so that's all for today guys i hope this video helped you a lot if yes please like this video and subscribe to my channel and share this as much as you can with your friends thank you and have a nice day jai hind